And this is the man Winston has got to beat. Coming into the ring behind the Mexican flag, the champion of the world, Senti Saldivar. 22 years old, champion of the world for almost a year. Beaten only once in his 26 fights. And what an occasion this is tonight. This is undoubtedly the greatest occasion in British boxing that we've had for 14 years, since, in fact, the night in this very arena, Earl's Court in London, when Randolph Turpin of Britain beat the, we thought, unbeatable Sugar Ray Robinson for the middleweight championship of the world. I haven't known as much excitement in British boxing since that night 14 years ago. the very emotional scene at Earl's Court Arena just about 24 hours ago. Now, where is Howard Winston tonight? The answer is that he is back among his own people, the people of Merthyr. There is the scene in the town hall of Merthyr Tidville where Winston tonight is being given a civic reception. We've installed television screens there, and tonight Winston, his family, his manager, and all his friends and relations in Merthyr are again going to watch the featherweight championship of the world, the bid by Winston to win the title from Saldiva of Mexico. Remember when a British fighter has had more support than Winston has got here tonight. Winston, who sat in his corner while well, they were singing the Welsh anthem, and he was singing it himself. Winston, the master boxer. Saldivar from Mexico from the left hand corner. The southpaw, the man they call in Mexico, Il Zucco de Oro, the left hand of gold. The big punch is in the left hand. The puncher from the left, the boxer from the right. Britain hoping to win a world title, the featherweight championship of the world, the one title which a Britain failed to win. No Britain has ever won the featherweight championship of the world in the history of modern boxing. Saldiva, broad-shouldered, squat, a sworn-off figure against the rather taller figure of Winston. Winston some two inches taller and about two inches longer reach. If Winston is going to win this, he's going to win it with boxing. There are 15 rounds can Winston keep out of trouble for 15 rounds? If he can, he can win. But one careless move, and Zaldiva is going to keep out of trouble. First one from Saldivar and Winston took it on the chin and he didn't flinch. Winston, the little master of the left hand. The best left hand boxer we've produced perhaps this century.
Divas. This opening round is interesting because we're looking to see if he's got speed to go with the punch. Because if he's got speed, this is going to be Winston. If he can match Winston for speed, then the British champion is going to be up against him. Winston can push this left hand in and out, can move faster than Saldivar. And the World Championship is short than his grasp. The champion of the world, Vicente Saldivar from Mexico, 22 years old, one of nine children from the back streets of Oaxaca, nearly 300 miles to the southeast of Mexico City, some 5,000 feet above sea. Champion of the world for almost a year, he beat Sugar Ramos of Cuba last year to take the title and became the eighth Mexican-born fighter to claim a world title. The 26-year-old challenger Wales from the World Mining Valleys, who has so much support here, train load after train load of Welshmen, has come into London today to give this boy the, all the support he could possibly ask for. Saldiva, the champion of the world. Well, this is the man who is sure to be strong because we know that he can produce a knockout punch as late as the 15th round, which he did when he defended the title earlier this year. Round three. Authorities from all over the world, members of the World Boxing Council are here tonight watching this. This is the fight they've called the perfect match. The artist Winston from Wales against the fighter, the little two-fisted southpaw slugger, the sawn-off Marciano, they call him. Saldiva from Mexico. Typically Mexican looking with that pencil line moustache and obviously strong. too often he doesn't want to go in there mixing it with Sardiva his aim should always be to box he's trying that right hand often and getting it home to the face of the south pole. and these are dangerous punches for Winston in the third round Sardiva are opening up they're all hooks. Don't hold. Bill Williams, the referee to Winston. And Winston showing disturbing signs of wanting to mix it. He does this occasionally, much to the annoyance of his corner. They don't want him to go in and mix it. They want him to stay away. Getting caught with more punches to the head than he should be in this round, Winston. Blinking a little from the effects of it. Speed and science, these have got to be Winston's main weapons. nearly 17 years that I've been covering boxing professionally. I don't remember seeing any British fighter go into the ring with more chance of winning a world title than Winston has here tonight. He really has got a good chance if he can keep out of trouble for 15 rounds. This is a tall order. Earlier this year, in his sole defense of this title, Saldivar met Raul Royas, California, in Los Angeles. And he stopped him with 10 seconds to go at the end of the 
15 round fight and that'll give you some idea of how strong this man can be after having boxed almost the full championship distance so this is the sort of tough opponent that Winston faces if only boxes round five. Winston I think can do it Get away from those ropes. Oh. That is one of the major faults of Winston. He gets himself trapped on the ropes and he's cut. Winston is cut over the right eye. That's the one suspicious. And now it's cut. A thin line across the right eyelid. Winston cut in the fifth. Well, that can be considered a major setback for Welsh British hope. that came about in that little session on the ropes there where he must never get trapped. Now Winston has a burden to carry because now he's got to protect his right eye. Slip. got to be left hand work now with the right hand up to protect the eye and the work fast to keep up. Saldiva is. When he thinks he's on top, he's relentless. Well, you don't become champion of the world without that sort of quality. Coming to the end of the fifth, and this has been an unhappy round for Winston. and urgent repairs on that right eye. He's got the boxing ability, he's got the footwork, he's got the left hand, but he seems to me at the moment to be throwing a lot of this advantage away by standing in the centre of the ring, trying to trade punches with Saldiva, trying to duck and weave out of trouble rather than scoot around the ring and keep away from it that way. for a low punch. Oh, 
left hand work from Winston and their right. This is his major weapon and he's not using it enough. And there's ropes again. Winston has certainly not been allowed to settle down into any sort of rhythmical uh, stride. He hasn't got his left hand going. And he's being pressurized a lot by this incessant two-fisted punching of the world champion. And things at the moment are not going entirely Winston's way. Jab and move, jab and move. This must be Winston's policy. And why does he do that? Sixth round completed. Howard Winston, the Welsh challenger, the British, and the European featherweight champion. There have only been two Welshmen in the history of boxing who've won world titles. One was Jimmy Wilde at flyweight. The other was Freddie Welsh. Wilde was champion from 1916 to 23, and Welsh lightweight champion from 1914 to 1917. So it's over 40 years since Wales have produced a world champion. So you can understand this Welsh fervour at the ringside tonight. And Winston apologises for a, a punch which slipped low. could go either way and it certainly hasn't turned out to be the sort of contest we expected it's not so cut and dried in styles and contrast of styles it's not the complete fighter Saldivar against the complete box of Winston because Winston has chosen to slug it out a little bit more to stand there and mix punches rather more than we expected and perhaps a little more than is healthy for him Working, working, working all the time. Two fists, all hooks. Strong as a little bull. Round eight. Which of these two is going to tire first? Which is going to wilt first under this pressure? They really are setting a pace now. This looks to me like one of the vital rounds of this fight. Because they're testing each other here to the utmost for stamina. No further trouble from that right eye of Winston's. It's hardly bled at all since it was cut. Some of these punches landing with the inside of the glove from the Mexican. Maybe it's as well they are. Beautiful defensive work. Beautiful. going over his shoulders and round the back of his head and everywhere but on the table. But come away from those ropes.
Yes, this is warming up now. There's no doubt about it. This one is really coming to the boil now. Eight runs. And one feels that we're getting very much towards the vital stages now because something has got to give here. One or the other of these has got to give. The pace is pretty tough. And they're both taking a lot of punches. And who is going to be the first to crack? Second out, round nine. And still anybody's fight. and favours this one to the left and then the quick right cross he's getting it home to the head this leathery skin Mexican showing no marks at all on his face Run and it's noticeable that Saldivar has been a lot less effective in the ninth. A lot less. So far, this has been very much Winston's round, one of the clearest for him. barrage from this Mexican. But Winston managed to evade most of them. And that left hand going in. He's getting underneath, ducking underneath most of these hooks, Winston. Coming to the end of the ninth. on the left side, Winston. Guarding against a cut. It's now beginning to take the shape we expected, the strength of the Mexican against the artistry of Winston. This is the pattern it's now beginning to assume very definitely. Which is going to triumph?
he's shown in previous fights. Saldivar can be dangerous right to the very last bell. And he's looking extremely dangerous in this 10th round. Winston is beginning to flag a bit. He's taking a lot more punches in this round, Winston. He's looking a bit perturbed. His left eye isn't looking too good either. Come on, has he got the strength here to keep going with this Mexican, to match him punch for punch, to keep poking that left arm? The Mexican getting signals from his corner to move forward. Come on, come in. They want him to keep going in. A minute left of the tenth. Vital round for Winston this You can see the pink on the gun sheet. Ominous signs that this Mexican is getting too strong. Being too strong for this. Five rounds left. He's still there. But has he got the strength to rally now against a man who seems to be still very strong? That was the hardest round Winston has had yet. Five to go. sign now in this 11th that Saldivar is beginning to feel the strain a bit his mouth's beginning to come open he's breathing a bit hard and he's glad of the odd rest notice occasionally he's dropping his arms now he's glad of a little breather in this round the Mexican made a big effort in the 10th and it may have told quite a bit on him he's beginning to look a white face too Saldiva he's definitely showing signs of strain Winston's left eye. Just over half a minute left of the 11th and this strong, tough little Mexican beginning to come strongly again. 30 seconds to go. There can't be the force behind him. There was. 
but he's still producing the punches. Well, you can see for yourself that they're both showing signs of extreme tightness. The punching is getting ragged and wild. And it's not to be wondered at because they really have been going at a pace. They're giving everything. There's the end of the 11th. And Winston is trying for his very life here. This is the only ambition, of course, that he's got left in boxing to win the world title. The one thing that's left to him to win. This is the peak moment of his life. And there are four rounds to go. But an awful lot is going to depend on these last four rounds. Certainly cut over the right, the beginnings of one over the left. And Sardivar's own face now beginning to look a little worn. But still, you can see, very strong. Punches from the world champion landing that Winston's managing to get in in the 12th. Now after those crucial 10th and 11th rounds, it's looking at this moment as though the stronger of the two men is the world champion. Winston bleeding from the nose. wits about him but has he got the strength to produce his best boxing and Saldivar is determined to storm his way through everything man's title is at stake. No British boxer, no British born boxer has ever won this nine stone championship. Can Winston break the hoodoo?
this man's strength, Saliba, seems to be inexhaustible. Perhaps we suspected this from that performance against Rojas earlier in the year. We stopped him with 10 seconds to go after 15 rounds. And here he is demonstrating that strength once more. If anything beats Winston here, it will only be the strength of this Mexican slugger. I make, my, make no mistake, Saldivar is feeling this. He's feeling the strain himself. His mouth drops open every now and again. He has to rally himself to come forward with another burst of punching. And now Winston is bleeding again from the left eye and the, a trickle of blood running down his cheek. Another unlucky one for Winston because he's cut again. And he's cut underneath the eye this time, Winston. The signs of battle all over his face now. Saliba had a good round there. And now we can expect to hear the Welsh fervour, and there are 10 or 11,000 Welshmen in this audience tonight. This is where they're going to begin to roar for... And at this stage, he'll need all the encouragement he can get. Mexican punch. Winston now almost too tired to do much about it. It's all Saldivar now. Superior brutes, the Mexican, really tell. Nothing Winston can do can stop him coming through. Well, if Winston was ever worried about letting anybody down, he needn't worry. Because whatever happens here, he's let no one down. This has been a tremendous display by Winston. Full of courage, full of gameness. Put everything here. He's tried to box, he's tried to fight his man. But it looks as though strength is going to turn. Punches coming out, but nothing behind them. And the legs like lead. Winston go, there's no doubt about it. The Welsh challenge is fading out. He hardly knows where he is, Winston. This is so sad, it really is. So glad to hear that bell.
and there is one round to go. Three minutes for Winston to try to become the third world to win a world title. But it now looks impossible. It looks as though the chance is gone. The Welsh dream has faded away under the strength of this incredibly strong Mexican, Vicente Saldivar. The last round. Can, can Winston do it? It looks impossible. Still very strong. He came through those middle rounds when it looked as though he might be flagging. He got through it, he found his second win, and here he is now, as relentlessly strong as ever. And Winston just wants to hang on. Come on, Winston. Come on, boy. left and still Winston is standing there trying to box this man it's a wonderfully game and gallant performance for Winston and a tremendous show of strength by the Mexican as we reach the closing second is over and it's Saldivar still the champion Vicente Saldivar of Mexico is still champion of the world and the Welsh challenge has failed but it's failed so very very gallantly Howard you know that uh, there are quite a few people on the ringside who thought you won this fight uh, would you agree with that yourself well Eddie said it was close he just got pipped you know and that's it did you get all the it from about the 12th onwards I think so yeah well Eddie you know, he came in strong, cuffing and pushing, 13th and 14th, and came back to 15th. How does he compare with other men you've met? Is he far and away the toughest man you've ever met? Well, one of the strongest, I want to see the best puncher though, you know. He was pushing and cuffing me a lot. Like. He didn't have quite the class that uh, I expected to see from him. I mean, a strong man, but not much else. No class, no. Do you feel that you might have boxed, you know, hit and run a little bit more than you did? You, you were a bit inclined to stand and, and try to trade right hands with him once or twice. Well, he wasn't hurting me, and Eddie said, throw some good right hands, which I did. But as I said, he wanted me, he was cuffing more than anything else. How much of a letdown is it to you that uh, you've come all this way, you've got the fight you wanted and now it's gone? How big a disappointment is it to you? Well, I'm more sorry for the, my people and my friends who come up to watch me, you know, but I did my best, they all seem happy, so that's the way it is. I don't think anybody's, uh, that nobody feels that you've let them down, I don't think you needn't worry about that. Well, that's all I'm worried about anyway. But what about your career now? Is, is this, um, 
Is this a turning point? Does this mean that you're now thinking of uh, out of the game? Or oh, no, on? it's still a lot of money to be earned. And I'm going to win all day. Coming back, and it's up to Eddie to get me trying to win another belt. I owe Eddie a belt, so... <laughs> you owe him a belt? I owe him a laundry belt from someone, and I'm trying to get one out. And then hope to fight Salva, or whoever's champion again. Uh-huh. Would you go out of the country to, uh, to take a world title fight? I say, tell it to Eddie. What he says. Was there any point in the fight when you definitely thought, well, this is it, I'm going to win this title and he can't stop me? Did, well, did you feel as confident as that? It was close all the way through. I knew he wouldn't stop me because he wasn't punching as I said he would. He was slapping, cuffing, pushing, you know, he was strong, but he wasn't hurting me. Were you ever near to going down at all? The 14th looked like a really rough one for you. Well, he hit me and hurt me, but, but enough to go down, you know. Still felt strong. You picked up a few cuts. I remember seeing you cut quite as many times. They're not bad ones, but the little ones and they're under oh. eyes. Did it worry you too much? A couple of little nicks. No, my corner, they done a good job there. Of your family were here tonight watching you? Oh, uh, maybe 60. 60? Yes. In the family? Well, we in laws, everything, you know, <laughs> all counted. <laughs> have they all been in to see you since this? Or? Well, my wife and my mother have been in. Uh -huh. And they're happy, they think I won it, you know what women are. <laughs> there are a few people out there, uh, apart from your relations, who think you won it. So, uh, yeah. it was uh, it's a close fight. Touch a good go after the fight, I thought. Yeah, good fight. So now what? And I'm going to win all these next week, come back and start my career all over again, I hope. Oh, well, not, fight not quite at the beginning. Well, I'll start training when I come back home. It's up to Eddie. Anyone can get me to fight. And I'm still young and I'm not hurt at all. Mm -hmm. Well, we wish you all the best, Hard. Thank and you, We'd Eddie. love to see you get another chance because uh, I think we all thought that this was one fight that we really had a good chance in. And you came very close to it. Thank you, Eddie. So let's hope next time you come, right there. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Hard. Thank you. A sad little scene, as it always is, of course, in the loser's dressing room on that Harry Levine.